Is there anything I can do for you two? I'm afraid that Wangsheng Funeral Parlor isn't in the best state to receive guests. We've come to see Zhongli. Could you please tell him we're here? Unfortunately, Zhongli isn't here at the moment. It seems he went to Northland Bank. Doesn't the Northland Bank belong to the Fatui? Last time we saw Zhongli was before we went to the Golden House. Do you think he doesn't know about the attack on Liyue? Visiting the Fatui at a time like this could only mean more trouble. We had better go and make sure that everything is okay. You call this cooperation between Harbingers. Cooperation involves communication, you know. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey, it's Zhang Li and Child. And... you! You're also one of the Harbingers? <laughs> it's you two. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Bards, was it? I'm glad you still remember my name. Ah, right. I imagine that it must have been rather hard to forget watching helplessly as something precious was snatched away from your friend. Well, if it isn't you two, this is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit... awkward, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Paimon knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except for that little tussle we had at the end. <laughs> Nothing personal. We just have different views, that's all. Of course, you may very well hold this against me, but that's up to you. The real deceivers here are Senora and Zhongli. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think... Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. What in the world are you talking about? <sighs> the contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. For my promise is solid as stone. <sighs> How sanctimonious. What? So you're the Lord of Chia? No, wait! That's an exciting twist and all, but why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract, for it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. Yeah, you don't think you went a little bit too far with that whole fake death thing? Everyone was preparing the ceremony for you and splat! This big dragon falls out of the sky and all of Lyric goes into an uproar! Talk about a disaster! <laughs> Gathering all the forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. 
that's what he wanted to see. Am I right? Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. I witnessed the founding of Leoe, together with the Adepti 3,700 years ago. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form, and that the end of my time had not yet come. Until one drizzly day, as I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? Oh, Zhang Li! But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remain to not hastily depart. Was Liyue, the city I had dwelt in for so long, already prepared to enter its next age? I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer. So I feigned my own death, and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Liyue Chising to play their roles together on the stage that was Liyue. Indeed I was. The Gnosis which I had kept for so many years suddenly seemed to have lost its meaning. That's right. Which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the Chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lila back under control? Of course, and it would have been all too easy for him too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Liyu matured when faced with the death of its deity. I was pleasantly surprised with the finale of the show that you all put on. Why, you even deserved an encore. The Adepti deserve the greatest applause, considering their years of seclusion. They hardly recognized the city, yet faced with such a crisis, they exerted the greatest amount of restraint. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Chising, but in the end, they even tried to understand the heart of the people. And hats off to the emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract, Signora. She managed to keep everything she knew in strict confidence, far from the eavesdropping ears of her colleague child, just as I had requested. All the while, I carried on as Zhongli, and fulfilled the traditions of Liu in this mortal form. Thank you for walking that path with me, Traveler. These things were all a part of my script. The only unforeseen plot twist was the conduct of the Leo Achising. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti, to come to the defense of Leo. But when all was said and done, they seized the opportunity to supplant Leo as divine protectors and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death to quickly gain complete control of Liyue. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all! <laughs> On the contrary, I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also that which I longed for the most. As such, this is the best parting gift anyone could have given this god of old. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if anything. 
If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, a Depti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geoarchon, Liyur would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? Hey, haven't you learned the Leo is saying? Don't always call it as you see it. <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapoljarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. <laughs> Do as you wish. Bruh. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? told us a good trade is a fair trade. Paimon has no idea what could be a good trade for a Gnosis. Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. Huh? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. we're going through with this rite of parting? I guess it means that those rumors hit the nail on the head. So Rex Lapis is really... <sighs> but they didn't catch the culprit, did they? Oh, come on. Do you think that the assassin could have been a normal person? You know what I think. I don't think any of the gossip on the streets you hear from those shady types is worth anything. There's only one real possibility in my mind. I've heard that the assassin was that Fatui fellow. Youngish, pretty high in rank. I think they called him child. The Fatui? Hmm. They certainly are very suspicious. Who knows what those greedy, crooked folks... Shh! Lower your voice. If the Fatui catch you in their sights, Rex Lapis won't be around to protect you this time. You know that god from the ocean couldn't have just shown up out of nowhere. I mean, it's been 2,000 years since Rex Lapis subdued it. Yes, and to think that this happened right on the heels of the incident with Rex Lapis, too. Say, do you think the person who assassinated our lord and released that evil god might have been one and the same? Now that you mention it, that's very possible. Yes, it's very possible indeed. I mean, it all fits together. That person must have colluded with the evil god to harm Rex Lapis. Oh, that wicked, black-hearted scoundrel. Still, what sort of supernatural prowess must this person possess to be able to do such things? I have never heard of such a person in all my years. Ah, forget it. Guessing's no use to us. Look, the Millilith over there looks like he's about to make an announcement. Let's hear what the Ministry of Civil Affairs has to say first.
Hear ye all the Chi Sing's words. Though a dragon soars ageless as the mountains, it too must return to dust. This is common knowledge. Gods and Adepti live glorious lives, but both light and shadow have their season. So too must they face divinely appointed trials. Rumors and hearsay abound on the streets that Rex Lapis was murdered. Now, let the truth be revealed. Having been thwarted in his trial, Rex Lapis's soul has recouped the celestial heights. He beseeches the people of Lyur to grieve not and to let not their hearts be saddened. Nor are they to believe street-born rumors or indulge in baseless speculation. a translation on what the Chi Sing's announcement said. <sighs> so that's how they're spinning it. Something feels off. Why would they suddenly give up looking for the murderer? Not to mention how this excuse sounds like something they just made up on the spot. Could the Chi Sing already have known that Rex Lapis wasn't dead? But Zhang Li said that neither they nor the Adepti knew anything. Hmm. Did Zhang Li tell them in secret after his gnosis changed hands? Exactly, right? Ooh, seems like the rite of parting has been going on for a while now. Let's go have a look. <laughs> It's Ningguang and Kuching. Are they saying something? Are their speeches over? As said previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract. And it is also the end of an era. 3,700 years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous, but blinded by our prosperity, we forgot that time can be pitiless. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Hmm. Now that we have awoken from our dream, we must learn to say farewell. Will you stand with us as we re-establish our contracts? As we build a new age of prosperity? So concludes the words of Her Eminence, the Tianquan. Does Her Eminence, the Yuhang, have anything to add? Huh? Is she looking this way? Traveler. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Is that the Traveler who they say defeated the Ancient God? So young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Name your price. You deserve that much. Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters? The cleanup of the premises, managing the crowds as they exit, making an account of the right? There's much that remains to be done. I didn't miss anything, did I? Roping you in was possibly the most masterful move we could have made. I believe that future generations will say so too when our deeds come up for their review. <laughs> Why you... 
Were you just trying to look cool earlier, or are you really that selfless? If you were looking for someone, you could have just told me that in private. Would I not feel more at ease after laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700 years? Right. If the two of you can spare the time, I should treat you to a meal at the Shinya kiosk. <laughs> that sounds like big talk, Zhongli. Paimon might have believed you if you were treating us to some third round knockout. But you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Shinya Kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? Hmm... You're right. <laughs> I do like the Mora. But why would Morax like Mora? As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create Mora. But since I have chosen to walk this earth as the mortal Zhongli, I should abide by the same rules that mortals do. When I was journeying with you, though I still had the Gnosis in hand, I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an Archon. So I had to... rehearse a little for my new life. Oh, no wonder! Paimon gets it now! You didn't look at the price tags when we were spending because you've never had to. But since you weren't used to not being able to just make more Mora as and when you wanted to, you had to try becoming a parasite to society who lives off of other people's credit. Well, we were only spending Fatui money. You don't have to say it like that. In the City of Commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. We also exchange knowledge, memories and foresight, as well as positions, roles and lives. The Archon Morax could never experience life as the true mortal Zhongli could, no matter how many times he descended to be with his people. <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhongli, traveling the streets of Liyue with you. That is true. But there is no journey that does not end. No meetings without partings. Hmm. Paimon thinks that we should make a move and continue our search for the Seven. I fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. The nation that neighbors Liyue by sea, in Azuma, is presently closed. Yes, the nation has been closed by order of its deity. The Electro Archon Ball. And just as the people of Liyue preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inazuma. We've heard that one before. Uh, right, Raiden? That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of the Inazuma Bakufu, people call her the Raiden Shogun. That said, though people at the wharf were saying that the situation in Inazuma is very tense, Paimon doesn't remember that always being the case. It wasn't that bad last year. Zhongli, since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what's happening there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control, humans often bemoan their lack of power. 
But if a person shows true strength of will at a desperate and fateful moment in their life, the gods will look upon them with favor. This is what visions are. Magical foci bestowed upon those who have been acknowledged by the gods. Uh-huh. That's how people in Tevet see it. But starting from last year, the Raiden Shogun began promulgating the Vision Hunt Decree. Vision Hunt Decree? Yes. It was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders, and to inlay them upon the hands of a statue of the Thousand-Armed Hundred-Eyed God. They want to seize visions? But why? Aren't visions blessings from the gods? I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, it is precisely because they are divine blessings that they should be under the sole dominion of divinity. Whoa, that's harsh. The Animo Archon is the god of freedom, and the Geo Archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could pose a threat to her eternal realm. The fact that even I, the oldest of the seven, have now passed away, will only strengthen her resolve to pursue eternity. Knowing her, she must have again quoted that adage she is most fond of when proclaiming that decree to her people. Seven ideals for seven gods. And of these, eternity is nearest unto heaven. All right, then. Was there anything else you wished to know? <laughs> ah, that was a good one. Failing a divine trial. How they came up with that excuse, I will never know. That said, the reason why the Chi Sing were so eager to resolve the incident and stop pursuing the culprit was indeed because they received news in secret that Rex Lapis was not dead. I hinted as much to the Adepti as well. How did I accomplish that, you ask? Hmm. Uh, have you ever heard of this particularly convenient Adepti art known as gifting dreams and visions? All right, then. Was there anything else you wished to know? Yeah, about that. Before the Cheesing made their announcement, we listened to a lot of people talking on the way. Most of them put the blame for everything on Child. These are indeed false accusations. But it remains undeniably true that Child did send people to the Jade Chamber to prevent the Adepti and the Cheesing from defeating the ancient god. I've heard that Ningguang is busy milking that for all it's worth on the foreign relations front at the moment, browbeating the envoys of the Fatui. Ha! <sighs> Those poor Snezhnayan diplomats. If it were not for Child's exalted position as a harbinger, I'm certain that they would have shifted all the blame to him and called for his dismissal by now. All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liu Achising don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liu? Kuching is absolutely right in saying this. Now, though I did laud Ningguang's desire for power, believing this to be a good thing, and thought as a matter of course that she must have been behind the Achising's plan to take governing power over Liu from the hands of the gods and Adepti. Could the original person who brought up the idea of seizing power have been... Hmm... All right, then. Was there anything else you wished to know? That's right. Zhang Li, now that you don't have your Gnosis, what's going to happen to all the more into that? Since Morax is dead, are they all just gonna disappear? Also, isn't the Golden House the only mint in the entire continent? Will it even continue to work? The Mora present now will not vanish. 
But the Golden House will indeed have to cease operations for a lengthy period of time, since creating Mora requires the use of the Geo Archon's power. This is terrible! We're all about to run out of Mora! The world is coming to an end! Yes, this is indeed a major issue from a financial standpoint. Uh, well, I suppose we'll just leave such troublesome matters to the Leo Achising to debate. Then, did you at least set some private funds aside for yourself? Oh, a private fund. Hmm. This does seem like a good logical common sense idea. <sighs> it's a shame. What's a shame? It's a shame that I didn't think of it at the time. All right, then. Was there anything else you wished to know? Well, then. I suppose you'll have to find a way to get inside this closed nation. Have patience. I suspect that some serendipity must first come into play. <laughs>